it's Kelly and I have a little surprise for you tonight. I'm just going to get this in focus. Sorry, I'm going to just pull this camera up just a little bit. It needs to be a little bit further up than I normally have it. Okay, there we go. I want you to be able to see what I'm doing tonight because obviously by the title of this video, I am going to do an album share from my scrapbook retreat um, from last weekend. So I was at a retreat and um, did a little, um, did, uh, did a little, did a little bit of scrapbooking, did a lot of scrapbooking. So I made, I believe, 82, um, 82 layouts, if I remember correctly what the number is. But anyway, so the cool part about this is, for those of you who have been waiting for Disney and for Paris, you're going to see layouts in here from both. And now I've got this way too, way too high. Sorry, guys. Ugh. <laughs> there we go. Hopefully that'll be better. It's hard to tell sometimes. You don't need to see everything I'm wearing here. <laughs> anyway, um, so you'll get to see both Disneyland Paris and um, you'll see uh, you'll see um, what am I thinking? Paris itself. So anyway, and I still don't have this right. So uh, as I'm making crazy noises. So sorry, guys. Hopefully that's it. Bonjour, Claire. You're going to see some Paris tonight. As a matter of fact, starting off, this is Paris right here. So this is actually a layout of me on my birthday at a restaurant. Um, and I can't remember what it's called right off the top of my head. And any source I have to get to that name. But it wasn't too far from the Eiffel Tower. Um, it was not right next to the Eiffel Tower, but a little bit off the Eiffel Tower. Um, but we had, it was a, it was kind of a um, rainy day that day. And so we saw um, the Orsay Museum in the morning. And then in the afternoon, about 1.30, we went to the Eiffel Tower. We did what we were going to do at the Eiffel Tower. And then we, um, ended up then going to lunch and we had like a two and a half hour two glasses of wine lunch with a dessert and it was just a fantastic uh day and it was it it was it was spectacular <laughs> um to say the least and we were laughing about this because they delivered our glasses and they put them glasses of wine and they put them on the table like this and I said oh my gosh it looks like I'm drinking three glasses of wine so my best friend took this photo and I'm laughing and it was just such a fantastic day that I I just wanted to make sure that I could get this in and I'm going to pull this camera down more it still isn't close enough I don't want you to have to look at everything so hopefully this will get it now it the problem when you do this is I can see a lot less in my screen on my phone than I can actually see on the um, camera itself. So that's the problem I'm having. I just don't want you to have to look at my desk because that's kind of boring. There, now I think we've got it. Um, it's it, Like I said, it's a little bit different. So anyway, so um, I'm planning on using a lot of Maggie Holmes papers for the Paris portion. And then Disney, I'm using a lot of Echo Park. They're going to have two very different feels. I do have two albums already. I bought the We Are Memory Keepers album that's in gold. Um, so yeah, you do have to love those long French meals. Very, very true. But um, so right uh, as I start out, I'm going to keep the Paris in one album and then um, Disneyland Paris in the other album so that Disneyland Paris will come first because I was there for two days first and then we went into Paris. But I think I'll end up putting them together eventually and have to put some, some sort of divider in between, dividing page, but that's a long way away. Anyway, so Maggie Holmes, and that's what this all is here is just a lot of um, 
Maggie Holmes here, a little bit of doodle bug, but I love, I love, I don't, you know how it is, you don't love photos of yourself. I don't love photos of myself, but I love this photo of myself and this photo of myself in particular, because I've got such a big smile on my face. I'm having a great time. It was chilly and rainy, but, um, cause this was in the middle of January, but it was wonderful. Um, this is another layout of our hotel. Um, and this is, um, so we took photos of like the lobby and then there's photos of the room that I actually pulled off of their website. And then the photos of the bathroom I actually took, we we're sending them to my grandkids to show them like how funny European bathrooms can be like your shower with your sink. That's not uncommon, you know, that kind of a thing. So again, more, um, a lot of Maggie Holmes here again. This is a paper from a company called Minte, and you'll see in just a minute um, some other papers from that comp that um, that uh, company as well. So I would recommend we stayed at Hotel Emile, um, and it is less than a mile on the right bank of um, of um, Paris uh, in Le, Le Marais. And it was a wonderful um, neighborhood. This is only about a half a block away from the St. Paul Metro Station. So it was so easy for us to get around uh, Paris because of that. So that's this two-page layout. You know, just want to remember where we were staying. Um, this, These are two separate. So um, my daughter-in-law really wanted hot chocolate. It is something that... Um, Paris is known for it may be France in, in general. Claire can probably tell us that, but definitely in Paris, it's a thing to do in the winter. And we went to Angelina um, or Angelina, uh, which there's a lot of places you can get hot chocolate, but she really wanted to go here because it's pretty well known for it. But we also had lunch. I don't know if you can see this, but this is a BLT. The, oh, you can actually, this is a BLT. It was, it was, it tasted as good as it looks. So we had our hot chocolate to actually start and then this afterwards. Um, the other thing that was amazing about Paris in January is there were flowers everywhere outside like this. Obviously, they're not real, but they looked real and they were absolutely gorgeous. And it just made um, kind of a dark time in the city really bright and beautiful so these are minte papers here it's m-i-n-t-a-y um and a, a little bit of a doodle bug chocolate stickers and then these are some punch outs that you can use and then this is some maggie holmes paper so i've definitely this is what i the feel of Paris for me, plus the buildings, which I don't know if I have any pictures of those that I scrapped here so far, but those things combined. And that's why I'm using these types of things because that's just what Paris felt like. I had originally bought, um, I thought I'd do it in uh, the, I think I've talked about this. There's a doodlebug collection called I love something. And I've talked about this or I, I talked about it. I'll, you'll see a video coming up actually on April 6th and it shows you how I'm organizing everything. And I talk about that then how after I was in Paris, I actually changed what I was going to scrapbook Paris itself with. Prior to that, the Disneyland and Paris would have been would have gone together really well. You would have gotten a really good feel for those. But they... um after I was here. It just that that doodlebug collection is not the feeling of Paris, especially not in the winter, but I think just in general, at least where we were. So I changed it. So again, I believe it's April 6th that that video is coming out. Um, I can actually probably tell that if I just move something around here just to look. Yeah, it's a Saturday. There's another, there'll be another video that day. And I think it's my first, I think that'll be the first video that you see me actually um, uh, construct from that trip as well too. You'll start to see some of those. There's plenty coming up. Okay. So um, this and uh, La Durie, La Durie, I think is how you say this. They're, they make mac macarons and they're very famous for it. I will tell you that we had lots of macarons that were better than these, but they're very famous for it. The shop is very, it's beautiful. You can see from some of these pictures. Now, I will tell you that those macarons were better than most anything that I had um, 
anywhere else um, here in the U.S. Um, they're just they were just better. But anyway, so they were beautiful, and you can pick them out. You know, a few things you'll see. My favorite place to have macarons in. Um, you'll see it in this because I just, I scrapbooked it and, oh, and here it comes. So anyway, and then obviously I wasn't totally scrapbooking this in, um, in order because I scrapbook what I'm feeling and I knew I had this airplane paper and wanted to use it. This is a Maggie, well, not a Maggie Holmes paper. I think this is a, a crepe paper travel collection. So CDG is the airport, um, code for Charles de Gaulle, which is one of the two main airports in, um, Paris. So this is the departure. So this is the Air France departure lounges. And um, the whole thing about this is when we, um, and Claire, Claire can probably speak to this, when we arrived in Paris, it looked like we had arrived into some sort of prison barracks. It was very concrete. It was very gray. Um, there wasn't a lot of color. We walked for 45 minutes to get to our luggage. We waited another 45 minutes or an hour after that to actually get our luggage. It just was not a great experience. And so when we left and we're looking at these this beautiful departure lounges, it was hard to find food um, when we arrived. It, it, this was just a totally different experience. And I will tell you, when we were in France, overall, we had a fantastic um time and experience with the people there. They were so wonderful. They were helpful pretty much when we needed help and just um, in a, a friendly, but in a more reserved way. But that's, you know, that's a cultural difference. And that was fine with us. We knew that that was probably going to happen. Um, totally fine with us. But anyway, so we were joking about how they were not happy to see us, but happy that we were going to leave. Um, but in really seriously, 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 do not be offended. It did take us four hours to get out of the airport the first, the, uh, as we flew in. And that's a whole story in itself, which I'll, um, I'm going to tell in this book somewhere. But um, even though we didn't take any photos of it, I'll just tell the story if I have to and maybe take a picture from the internet of the airport because that's a story. Um, but anyway, we had a fantastic time, obviously. Okay, so this is um, the Macaron. This is the uh, place, Le, Le Lutrec, I believe it's called. It's L-A-U-T-R-E-C. So if you're going, I would highly re recommend it. They are a chocolatier, but they also have macarons. This um, was a, a fresh uh, blackberry and lavender, I believe. Yes. Um, oh, sorry, fresh blackberry and violet. So you get the, that's why you get those colors. And... Um, so I'm going to pull this out so you can see this a little bit. But, oh, and I, my intention is when I'm done with this, by the way, I'm going to pull out all the Paris layouts. Okay, we're just going to, I'm just going to flip them over. So this really is going to sit in my book like this so that you'll look like this. If this is a 6 by 12 sheet. So, <laughs> ah, thank you, Claire. I, I'm, I have to tell my two travel partners that <laughs> my, I said something to my nephew about it who goes to Paris a lot. And he said, well, it is a bit of um, what, how did you like a maze or something like that? <laughs> so anyway, but um, so this will sit like this in my book, actually, with, you know, it'll lay like this. And I've got this side, which you will see, it, you know, it'll lay opposite. I just wanted to do this because it'll be easy for me to find this. I don't know what I'm going to do here. I might just talk about observations, stories, whatever. I'll figure that out eventually. I'm not worried about it. So then this is, and again, these are Minte papers here. So this is the little brochure that we got from the um, chocolatier. And it talks about, we also got chocolate here. So I, on the inside of this, and I do want to come through and just open this up. I'll just take my um, X-Acto and run along here so that you'll be able to actually open it, the whole thing up. But it talks about the chocolate. We had the flavors of chocolate, and I had three of the flavors I had of chocolate were, um, or one of the flavors of chocolates that I had was also the same uh, 
violet and blackberry. And this was, it, I said it left me speechless because it seriously left me speechless. It was so amazing and so good. Um, this is a box. I did go, we did go back the night before we left and bought macarons as well. And so I had four and <coughs> I, li I liked, I used the box there just as something else. So using some memorabilia here. So then, and we're just going to do this like this because it'll work. Um, so this is, we all know Kelly likes to read, right? So one of the things I wanted to do was go to see Shakespeare and Company, which is on the left bank. I would highly recommend it. It's an amazing store. It's a lot of little tiny rooms. The books are in English there. And it has a lot of history to it as well. So you don't see it as much here, but you actually have to wait in line, which actually didn't take that long. I mean, it wasn't too bad. So I just used a lot of book embellishments. I used a book collection here from Photoplay, maybe? I don't remember exactly who this is from. And then these are the two books I bought from Shakespeare and Company. I have actually read both of them already. One is The Little Prince, which is one of my favorite books, so I bought a special edition that they carry. And then um, a book of poems called um, Paris in... Um, Paris in Our View. That was fantastic. Oh, Claire, that's lovely. Hey, that's so much fun. I get to see my nephew who I said goes to Paris at, at least once a year. He'll be there twice this year, um, next weekend. And we're going to open a bottle of the wine I brought back or one of the bottles of wine that I brought back and just talk about how much I loved my time there. Okay, so, and I just realized this has a bad word in it. <laughs> I was going to pull this out and I forgot. Lada Bella Boulevard here. I was with a friend of mine and we always talk about that we were talking about there was a boat parade going on like boats just kept going by because this was the middle of last summer and then all these ducks went by and we always laugh about how there's a duck parade that goes by her house except I uh, substituted the, the letter f instead of d for it accidentally and um so I looked at the post about a half an hour after I posted it for some reason. I was up on Facebook again and realized what I had done. And I started to laugh so hard. By that time, I think we had had a little wine, but started to laugh really hard. I took it, you know, I changed it. My dear daughter-in-law, however, knew that I would do that. So she took a screenshot out of it and posted it in the comments. <laughs> so anyway, um, thing to note here besides all this Bella Boulevard is that I MacGyvered a three into an E. This one is not quite as nice as some of, some of them that are very rounded, but that still was pretty good. And speaking of my dear daughter-in-law, here she is with all of her kids and um, husband here. These are their family pictures from last fall. And I, you know, I love, aqua is my favorite color, so I just love that they're um, all in aqua and navy. I think that's really cool how that looks. Um, this is really a lot of creative memories embellishments here in, in the stickers and things like that. And then um, I don't remember who this who that paper is from off the top of my head. And this is what I do when I have a lot of photographs and not enough room on pages so I don't have three or four is I have a six up photo um sleeve here and then I didn't have enough photos for that so I just put in a few little decorative pieces most of the time I have these all full but in that case and then here's some more photos so this is really the second page sometimes I will do a piece of I mean there is a piece of cardstock behind this that the, they are on sometimes you'll see and you'll see this come up in this book where they'll you'll actually see paper here but these are two four by six verses out of my phone so anyway plus some more creative memories just to kind of coordinate all those three pages um this is another one that I do need to open up a little bit so this is a um this is a gala that we go to every year to support a, can a cancer charity that a friend of mine started called This Time Tomorrow. And what they do is they do random acts of kindness. So they show, show people, nominate people who are going through cancer treatment and have a financial need. And they show up at their door with a very large check. It's thousands of dollars, um, you guys. So This Time Tomorrow is the name of the organization. Oh, you can't really see it. 
watched me do this. Just in case anybody has a loved one or friend who might be in need, this time tomorrow. Um, dot org is their website. So I loved how, you know, that brochure is very purple, but I, I had some Creative Memories paper here. This is actually kind of like a little shimmery, glittery black paper because it's a gala, so it's very fancy. And then um, some stickers as well. Which, <laughs> these two across from each other are crazy. They won't be across from each other. So this layout is about a little, um, my stepson and daughter-in-law took my oldest grandson golfing at a, um, it's called either Lux Golf or Top Golf. You'll see them around. This was in January, but we had a really warm January until we went to Paris and then it got really cold. So I'm just using some typical golf patterns, a golf ball pattern here and some stickers um, and these are available like at Michael's and Hobby Lobby and that kind of a thing. And then you'll see me do this frequently when I blend two pattern papers together. I put either washi or something else in between to separate the join to kind of pull everything together. And that's what I'm doing here. <coughs> I am have allergies. So sorry, guys, that's going to be a little bit of a thing tonight. After they were at that, my oldest grandson, and this, so this is M1 and M4, um, constructed a golf course, or really it was that course that they were um, on. They constructed a golf course out of magnet tiles. And so they're, they took this picture. It was very, very cute. So I just used like some golf course paper, and I have an envelope of different um, golf course collections that I keep on hand because... Uh, my boyfriend golfs a lot and I've started to golf again. I did it a lot when I was younger, but um, I've started golfing again. Bought new clubs last year. As a matter of fact, I did a layout about that. And then here I just used kind of a fun golf tee border. And I actually think that paper is really busy, but I think it comes off um, just fine because your eye is drawn to that border and then it goes to the photo and the white of that journaling card really helps you with your eye there. And so my M1 and 2 both play soccer. So there's a lot of soccer layouts in here. Again, I have an envelope of just soccer collections and that kind of a thing. So and I just realized this sticker is not straight at all, but it it's stuck down now and I don't think I'm going to be able to change that. I think it is where it is. I'll, I'll try to move it, but I don't know that I'm going to be able to do that without ripping paper. So typical three up or three down like this horizontally, three across um, if it's portrait. And you'll so you'll see that with a little bit of embellishment from here to here because the photos then are in between. And it, just a little bit of color here to pull everything in. They both have yellow jerseys this year, so that was just lots of fun. Um, another layout here, M1 started roughing this year. He actually got paid to do it for younger kids. And one of the first games he did solo was actually M2's game, which was really funny. So this is M1 here and M2 here. Um, just kind of a fun thing. And again, more soccer embellishments, but also just bringing in some labels and um, other kinds of uh, cut aparts and that kind of stuff to kind of help this out with the soccer. And again, kind of a busy paper, but black and white. And your eye goes right to this because it's a different color and blue. This is um, one's um, team for their first like tourney weekend. It was the first tournament he played. It was in the area, but we got that documented on the on the soccer field, their kind of paper. And because this was a open corner, I just put this little guy up here to kind of um, decorate that or it would have looked really too open. I didn't want a lot up there because I wanted the focus to stay here, but um, let's see, you know, something a little bit different. Combining a sticker with puffy letters to do the um, title. And here too, this is a, a raised 3D sticker with some puffy letters there just to do something different with titles. Um, this is M ones again and M M ones um I think last yeah this is his team the his like spring soccer team and just their last game so I, there's a lot of these soccer layouts there's gonna be a lot because I think 
M4 will probably pay, play soccer. M3 played a couple of games last time. It wasn't her thing. So, all right. So then this is um, M4. And he has this pair of glasses from um, M3. has a little vet kit with those glasses in. And he just looks so cute in there. So, and he is a smarty pants. And I'm not just saying that because I'm his grandma. So, um, I just, these are, this is a Bella Boulevard it was a Ball Boulevard school collection. This, these are old, but Super Smart was there. So I thought, well, okay, that, that'll be kind of fun for him. Just re a relatively simple layout here. Found some glasses to use. Um, this layout is, it's M1 through 3 here. And my daughter-in-law bought them like rain suits to go outside in during like COVID and she realized they hadn't really used them and they were going to outgrow them. Um, so the kids just went out one day in the rain in these suits. So kind of just a fun thing using more of a grid for all those photos. Um, this is M2 and he's on a hoverboard here. He's playing a keyboard here. He did not, had never had piano lessons and actually kind of picked piano up. He's now in formal lessons, but it's crazy, but he's also really good at math, and I think music and math go together really well. So kind of cool thing. A couple little hearts here to kind of um, decorate, but I did, you know, this background's green, so I did that green background, a little bit of yellow green because it's on yellow, and then this is all on red because there's a lot of red up there. And again, washi to separate the... Um, join of the paper here. This is a little piece of chipboard too to kind of separate the photos a little bit. They were blending in so that was a little technique I used there. Um, this is not a great picture of M1 but he went shopping for his first suit. He had something going on and they went out um, and found him a suit and it really that picture really was taken like that but he was so cute it was hard not to do that. Lots of creative memories. This is a Bella Boulevard background paper don't remember what this is, but lots of creative memories stickers on here. And I'll pull that up. Sometimes um, when you have lights, you know, I've got lights on and they're, when they're in the plastic, it can reflect off that. So sorry about that. Another pretty simple layout with kind of like a grid of photos again. Um, and really, I don't have any back, any paper on here as a mat. It's just, they're right on that background and then just a little bit of embellishment down here. And that's it on this layout. But the photos are pretty busy. So I was just kind of wanted to keep it that way. This is another one of those where I have a lot of photos. You're going to see this. With this one though, I think you can better see. So here's the first page and the second page. And then this portrait and these are portrait photos again is right in the middle and I just added some stickers to them but that's really what the layout looks about looks like so this is um for's fourth birthday last year and he loves Donald Duck he he loved him before we went to Disney and then he really loved him afterwards so I combined a lot of birthday stuff but I also used some Donald Duck stickers that people have given me to scrap um to scrapbook Disney, <laughs> our Disney trips. So that's a two page layout. And you'll see, this is a really a format I use all the time when I have a lot of photos where I do a couple photos over here and then six photos over here. And because they are coming out of our phones, they're a little bit shorter. I talked about that before. So there's actually paper there. And then I just pulled in this yellow paper here so that the layout has some um, continuity to it. So when you're going through the book, you can tell that this is really all part of one here. Um, another one here, this was um, M1's grandma overnight. I always do an overnight with each of the kids separately. Um, used to do it around their birthdays. Now it's a little harder because two of them have a birthday in March, but you know, we do that at some point. We waited till May with him because we wanted to take him to a Brewers game. And so that's what he did. So here I've got this. Um, this is just a three up. And the three ups, obviously, I've got portrait photos here, but they're not actually portrait, which is fine. Um, I think you got, you know, you can certainly see what he's doing here. And then on the back of this, this is a little. Um, you creative memories and s simple stories make these 
creative memories they're called peekaboo pockets it's a four by four pocket so you can see we had gone there's not any pictures of that because we didn't take any but there's pictures of some things that we were doing here but we also went mini golfing so this way we can we preserved kind of our scores so i thought that was kind of fun you know doing that what you know kind of how things went here so anyway but some baseball paper and then this is a really simple one I did use the same blue paper here and here to pull things across and then um, wood veneer on the pages so that kind of pulls them across too when you have a two-page layout um, this one is a two-pager again where I did different um, background papers it, but there's things that are kind of the same going across the layout. So these are, um, that's my stepson and his, my other stepson. So um, he, but he doesn't, he doesn't live here. He lives in another state. So we don't get to see him all that often, but it's them, their kids and my stepdaughters, a couple of my stepdaughters, kids are here too. So it's kind of fun to see them all together, the cousins and, um, this let's get wild is kind of where the whole theme for this went but i love this so this paper and all these mushroom embellishments and um everything on here except for this paper is all creative memories and it's their new nsd collection which is a lot of these blues and oranges i didn't think i was gonna like it i will tell you it is so much cuter in person than it is um in um in the catalog or online. So really cute little hedgehogs. And I put these up on, this was a layered sticker, but I put these guys up on some foam tape. This is layered as well to kind of get that idea. But I love how this turned out. And I'm using, obviously that goes together, but I'm using two different background papers so that you don't always have to use the same two papers for your background with two page layouts. So next up, and you've probably seen me do many of these is Every summer, um, my my um, grandkids and their families go to um, her father has a really good friend who has a place up north and um, they go up there and spend a week up there. So I don't really have a lot to say. I just like getting the pictures down because I've scrapbooked, I've scrapbooked this every year for years. He started taking just M1 up and as the kids have gotten older, they make a week out of it now. So um, what I did here is this is just, I write usually day three, day four, day five, day six, day seven, whatever it is on the layout somewhere and then a date and then just put the pictures in so that you can kind of tell where it is. A little bit of embellishment here. And then here as well. And um, this, so this is with day three and this is day four here. So they're going to, you know, however they may go in there, it might be a little confusing, but really the point is, is to get the photos in. So these are these six up portrait. You can buy these at Hobby Lobby, by the way. That's where I get mine. They have all sorts of different photo configurations. So then here's day four with these darling little fishermen. They all love to fish. So they do a lot of that. So this, and I could um, maybe even like date this so that you know, and date this somewhere so that you know that these two belong together and these two belong together. I'll probably do that when I go back. So, you know, things, you're, I, you know, you scrapbook that many layouts in a weekend and you don't really... Um, you know, think about what you're doing as maybe as intently as you do if you're not scrapping as many things. Speaking of which, I've talked about this before. I absolutely do not pre-plan any pages at all. I take my paper envelopes and I, there are videos in my, um, there's a scrapbook retreat playlist. There are videos in how I scrapbook for, how I pack for a scrapbook retreat. I take my baskets of embellishments, my cardstock, my faux salad paper, which these are, and then like I brought my Bella Boulevard uh, um, Lake Life paper collection. And so then I will do collections as well. And I try to set them up as close to how I scrapbook as I, um, as I can. And then I can just pull things. So, you know, I've got my pens, I've got my flower pot of tools like I use all the time. Um, I have my cases of die cuts 
just that's how I work it and I just scrapbook I don't pre-plan anything all right so there is the um this layout and this is uh day five so I wrote pine lake day five and there are like 15,000 pine lakes in Wisconsin but kind of funny um and then there are a few less pictures here so I was able to get them all on two pages and in this particular case I did use the same background paper but used a little um kind of uh, or a different paper than that coordinated with some of the colors in the layouts yeah, Claire, it is hard not to have scrapbook retreats. This is also a peekaboo pocket here, you guys. Um, the one thing I don't like about this is because this is at the bottom, it kind of goes over that photo there because these are not four by six photos. They're photos, actually they're cut down even more, but the phone photos are not four by six. So I don't love that. Normally I like to put these at the top or at the side, but this is just how this one worked out. I think it's fine. There's so many photos of this trip and you can still see like behind it as well too but it's nice to have that little flip where if you have a couple extra photos you don't have to have a whole new um whole new um page or something like that yeah claire oh yeah that would be so hard not to have them they're so lovely I have scrapped by the way the earlier days of this I was just getting through the like I took out I had a bunch of two page layouts with a lot of photos. And so I grabbed those first for the first day and, or not the first day, the second day and really made a lot of progress here. Um, so this is another day here. And, I, um, and so with this one, I don't have the in between, but I do have two flips here. And because I didn't have another photo, there's just a cute little thing that says jump in here. Now I could have, you know, I could have probably put that in one of these photo places like maybe this one or something like that and put it on the back side of this but I thought that's just a fun little surprise when you open it up and um, again this is lake life from Bella Boulevard it's just kind of fun oh I you didn't see that sorry guys so there's the flip pocket just realize that you couldn't see that so that's how that flip goes this page is um, just of a violin recital that my oldest grandson did. He plays the violin now, which is amazing. He's I, I always tell his mom, I can't believe how much he's learned in like the two years he's been playing. It's crazy. And they always do a summer one outside to kind of end their season, which is really cool. So these are some embellishments I just got at Hobby Lobby for music and I did so that's this one and then this same one this is an orchestra page s using uh, some more music things that I just got at Hobby Lobby and this one was kind of weird colors but it's in this banner back here that you can see so summer colors so I just played off of them because they're there they obviously go together even though I would probably never think about using a red and aqua together like that a little bit more formal page here because this was actually a school concert for last last spring, so just a year ago. Um, this is a two-page layout here. Again, this is my daughter-in-law's dad, and um, he took him on a little adventure to a city not too far away from them and took him on a trolley. They still have old-fashioned trolleys, so they thought that would be kind of a fun thing. And then they're they were on the Lake Michigan beach there collecting sea glass and or lake glass in this particular case. Um, really a relatively simple page because I'm not bordering it with anything. The pictures are on the back of this doodle bug petite print paper with some Ellie Studio um, die cuts and cut aparts. And that's kind of it with some puffy stars from Ellie's studio. So pretty simple, but I love how this green really pops off that bright blue background because it was a beautiful late summer day. It was September 1st here. Um, this is a little page about um, a celebration at a local gymnastics place that they go to a little gym for the kids. So they were all in a little program here and there and Again, I used the same colors here 
basically, but a little bit different because it's the bright blue this time with the green accents. And they won't be, these won't be together e and either. So even though like I'm scrapbooking some things and I'm doing a couple layouts in the same colors and that kind of stuff, other than those lake pictures, these are going to be separated by months and probably in a different book and you won't even know that. This is a picture of my granddaughter. This is actually the birthday celebration for her younger brother, but that face full of ice cream. I could not, you know, not scrapbook this. So these are some um, Chamel papers, I believe. So I, I have um, a food, uh, an envelope of food papers with a lot of ice cream papers in it, but I didn't bring it with me because I didn't think I had any of those to scrapbook. But when I found the Chamel paper, I'm like, oh, she's eating an ice cream bar. That's kind of, I know these are, popsicles or ice lollies depending on where you live but um that's this is cute and this is some old cheeky studio there was a little girl with brown hair and ponytails so I added that on there because the colors went really well together all right um this is a layout uh, kind of about a trip that they took last year um kind of in the middle of the summer so we'll, these are photos of them in the car on the way and they're all getting so big, it's crazy to look at these. And then um, kind of their Airbnb and then some of the things they did. And this is a little six up. This time I did put some papers behind the paper that coordinates with these two pages here. And then just this, this had a very um, woody industrial sort of feel. So I used some wood paper here and then here as well, because they were on the beach. So that kind of, I thought, really went together really well. If you if you do have phone photos, um, the, um, the um, it, it does make them fit a little bit better here. Debbie, I saw I was reading your comment. No kidding. And this is last summer. So this is, you know, getting on to be a year ago. He's so much taller now. It's just crazy. The kids all, it, when I look at these, have grown so much even since these. They, they're giants now. Not really giants, but they look like giants to their grandma. Okay, so this is a really cool thing that they did as a family. And remember, I'm scrapbooking. These will go in albums that I will give to them when the albums for the year are done, probably sometime late this year. Um, just kind of knowing where I am scrapbooking. Um, it's called China Lights and it's all these beautiful light sculptures outdoors in a local botanical garden. So this is Chamel and then I used the purple because these photos felt really purple to me. Um, and then a little bit of doodle bug in a stripe here. So purple and green because it just felt like that to me. Um, I, I wasn't, I didn't do this. Hopefully we'll be able to do this this year. But um, again, the six up photo here but then just kind of a minimal embellishments not a ton I did like how this border brought in all this kind of yellow and orange that was there though a lot of photographs there so we don't need a lot of stuff here um this is another one with the three up here six by twelve um and I used pattern paper here again that coordinated with this pattern paper because I don't think I had enough of this left over. So Chamel, this is again a lot of Chamel here. This is Doodlebug, but they work really well together. So this is her latest collection actually, which off the top of my head, I can't remember what it's called, but it's her latest one. So this was a little visit to an art museum and then they did art to our local art museum. It's kind of a fun, and again, I've used this format a lot, you know, three, six, but they look different because they're um, di different materials, different embellishments. This is some of that cheeky studio pieces. I was trying to, you know, get those on pages because I've had them for a while and they won't be next to each other. And, and even if they are, they're still going to look different. And here we go. So here's one where they might end up close to each other because these are a week apart. So this is her grandma overnight and we went to a little um petting zoo farm thing and rode tractors and just had a good time it was cold obviously you can tell this is the end of october but it was cold by us and this is more chamel again that newest collection which is called here i'm right here 
How can I forget? It's called Main Character Energy. I don't know how I converted. Great for Disney scrapbooking, actually. Another one of these. Now, this time, the three are going this way. And then I added another photo in here. This is how I like to use frames. Thank you, Debbie. <laughs> um, how I like to use frames here, oftentimes, just as a little background for an embellishment. Or sometimes I'll put some paper in here so I can... Um, uh, journal. <laughs> words. Words are hard today. So again, just a, a weekend that they were together and um, just liking the way, you know, the colors are high energy and, you know, pull in colors of, you know, I pulled in some blues and some yellows here. This is main character energy as well, too. And another photo up. This is from her grandma overnight. We were, mom sent her a project, a little craft project to do. I do have um, imagine this. I have craft supplies for the kids here. <laughs> um, but she just sent her something that they had found together. And so she and I, well, I helped her do it once, kind of helped her get going. And then once she got going, she didn't need any help. But find more main character energy as well here. Using flowers to play off the flowers in her little sweatshirt here, although not the same colors, but close enough. Um, this is their dog. So they um, did a little birthday celebration for him. So I did a little birthday page with, with him. And I did a black and white because he's really basically black and white with brown. So that was kind of fun just to do something different and kind of simple. Um, this is a, oh, a day where, I, this is Lake, Lake Day or Lake Ca Calling is called this. This is one of those rare times that I did not put any washi or paper there. And it's okay, but I don't love that, how they they um, transfer right into each other. But there was a lot going on with that stripe and the photos and that kind of stuff, so I just called it a day and, and left that as it is. I mean, it could always, if I wanted to, go in and like tuck some navy washi behind there, but I think it's fine the way it is. I'll leave it. And this is Lake Life, again, by Bella Boulevard. A lot of lake life here. This is um, M4 with his little friends at school in the summer. So I just I thought that was kind of fun. He loves her. So um, I thought it was cool to, to document. This is one of those that I'm going to either have to, I'm not going to be able to take this off, I don't think. Or maybe I can. Ooh, I can. I'm going to show you how these get applied. So obviously when you do this, they have to go in this particular order. Um, and I may have to kind of pull this off later or figure this out. Might not go exactly in page order. But all you have to do is there's a strip on the back with sticky on it. So you just kind of, I just kind of find, okay, where's the line of that photo? Oops have to do it up here sorry guys because this is not a four by six but where's the line of that photo match that up to the out to the page protector and then you just kind of burnish it on like that and this is a creative memories pocket right here but again they make these in simple stories as well too but they're really nice because I had um an extra photo here and I was able to get that or two extra photos really I was able to get them all on um there you go so that you can see how that flip works. And if I have to, once this ends up in the book, I mean, I'll put this away on this side. If I have to, I think because it's on the outside of this plastic, I'll be able to take it off if I want to, and then it'll stick. Okay, um, so this is some using some page ovens here. And they're making mosaics. I just like the idea of the colors here, even though they're a little bit more pastel than what they're doing here. But this was a little project during their Christmas break or last year, actually. And just added a little couple little things in here, just a, a little, lots of stickers. I'm using a sticker sheet here. And then I used a little bit of chipboard and just, a, it, it's easy when you use the same collection, right? Again, some Paige Evans, um, her first lost tooth. And that goes with her grandma day stuff but her first lost tooth here and just getting that documented she had just lost it two days before um this is a two-page layout 
And I just, in this particular case, I didn't have any extra photos. That was kind of nice. My boyfriend and I did this as well. It was the first time we saw this show. It was called Enchant, and it was very white. And um, although these have color to it, but most of it was very white, like these trees, white and silver, with a few little, like, purple lights and things here and there. So this is a, it's hard to see this, but it's a shimmer paper from Creative Memories in navy. And then this is one of their borders that I just added. It's white and gray, just added some rhinestones to and a little bit of silver here, a little bit of silver down here and called it a day. That border makes these photos, um, you know, makes the layout really. It's really simple, deceptively simple. Um, so this is, this is um, my daughter-in-law's dad and they built a little truck together. So with 771, 791 pieces, and he kept saying that, so I knew this layout needed to be titled that. Um, and it's a remote control um, truck. So that was pretty cool. So here I am, again, separating with the washi tape here, and then a big background here, and then all the embellishment stays in the center here. A lot going on with that stripe. But again, this solid piece of paper that draws your eyes right into the center of that layout. Um, okay, so next layout is a little bit about, I had not been shoe shopping in forever, and I had plantar fasciitis for two years, and so my shoe wardrobe has needed to change a little bit. I don't wear heels like I used to as much as I do now. I'm up on wedges, plus I needed some boots for, um, some, like, more fashionable boots for Paris, so that's what this is. These are the shoes I wore to that gala picture, and then these other three are just some basic wardrobe, basic shoes that I needed because either they were too high or they were really worn out because I hadn't shopped in a while. So that's just all this is. So just a little bit of, um, I, don't even, I think this is a piece of Creative Memories paper. Yeah, and then some, some die cuts and things and um, stickers, some hearts from Bella Boulevard. Fairly simple. Um, another, <coughs> so this will probably be, um, it'll be one of the first page, it'll be the, one of the first pages in the Paris part of my album, but I'm not quite sure, um, if I'll have something else introducing this or if this will be it. We'll see. It kind of depends on how things land. I'm hoping that this will be in the book just the way it is so that it's on the backside of Disney layouts so that you'll make the trans, the, um, the transformation pretty easily and it says Paris is always a good idea so that was something I just found I googled Paris scrapbook papers on either scrapbook.com or cherry on top and found this and I love it because it's a city view um, this is a picture of the street from our balcony of our hotel and then this is um, La Favorite La Fa yeah La Favorite I think it's La I don't think it's a little, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> but um, that's a restaurant. And if you can see, I don't know that you can really see this. I'm going to take this out and you'll be able to see this a little bit better. There's, this is all flowers and lights here. And I, I will, I think that's part of the reason that I think about that is every time we got, went back to our hotel, we saw that beautiful flowers all over it. As a matter of fact, we didn't take a photo of this, but one of the last days we were there, there were people eat outside in Paris even in January they put blankets out and they have heaters out but they were doing a photo shoot with a model and she was in a strapless dress on a January day where we were completely bundled up with scarves and hats I don't know how they didn't she didn't have goosebumps but anyway um Arc de Triomphe here we went to see that at night and I just realized that there is a piece stuck to this photo. Let me show you a thing. Hopefully this will work. So this is my old Cricut spatula with a really thin blade, and it does a really good job of taking stickers off. Um, I don't know that that normally would have been quite that easy, but it was this alpha here is, I think, from a Paige Evans or Maggie Holmes collection, and it's not very sticky. I always have to put extra glue on the back of those letters because they just don't stay. But, okay, let me get that in there. Um, and so here I'm using some memorabilia from Paige Evans or some not ephemera, sorry. Um, some stickers. I just, again, Googled Paris 
and found some stickers. So if you've got a trip, just, you know, you can, or not Google, but I just put it into the search bar of the scrapbook website. And it was amazing what it brought up. Uh, another Paris layout. This is the day that we bought our pass for the entire week for the Metro. And the guy who spoke supposedly very little English, I spoke very little French, but we somehow managed to get across what needed to happen because it wasn't quite as easy as I thought it was going to be. And I just love this paper because there's a very subtle Eiffel Tower here and then a picture of the station of my um, daughter-in-law and I just kind of hanging out and waiting to get the Metro back. And they were really actually clean, really clean. So that was kind of a cool thing. All right. So Disney, <laughs> we're back to Disney layouts here. Um, this is a great story. This is actually when we were in Disney and I have my 60 ears on, we got pixie dusted and we're able to skip the line for probably the most, um, the most popular ride in Disneyland Paris, which is called Crutch's Coaster. So it's a, that's why I have this nice big long piece here so that I could do it. And I kind of like that. I don't think I've ever done something like that where I've had that sticking up. I've done it where I've done it over here, but I just didn't have enough room to write if I did that. So I've got, you know, two different orientations and blending them sort of together with that in between washi dividing the two papers. This is um, Doodlebug. Doodlebug here, and this is also Doodlebug. So a lot of Doodlebug on this one. Um, the um, This is from this Disneyland Paris as well. They have um, food stalls like they do at the Christmas markets, uh, but they keep them up in both of the two Disney parks. And we ate from these a couple of times. So La Iver, I believe that's La Iver. I always have a problem with that La and La just because I speak Spanish. So, oh, Tammy, thanks. It's good to be live. So I wanted to get that documented because it was so cute. We walked into the park and had something to eat and a glass of wine uh, immediately because <laughs> we were so hungry because it took us four hours to get out of the airport. So that's the happy to be here and the um, I love this kind of a thing. Now, I don't normally do this because the arrow is pointing off the layout. So although really, if these two end up together, this will be perfect because this is some of the food and this is some street food specialties that they have during winter in um in Paris from the food stalls and that kind of thing. So this is a raclette sandwich, so which is an amazing cheese and ham and the um uh, the baguette. And then tartiflette, which is um potatoes and cheese and ham. It it is like a mix between what we make in the US, like a cheesy potato dish and scalloped potatoes and ham. It 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 was so good. <laughs> we we went back and had more. And then this is actually mulled wine, which we had a lot of when we were there. So this is Bella Boulevard, um, some doodlebug, and then this is the um the Ellie Studio here that I've got here. But just it's nice that these kind of come together and I'm talking about the food because that was a big thing what we ate. Um, I also and I had them more than once but I had a, a crap when I was there and um, with Nutella in it and I'm trying to think what else like I said we had when we got cold we either had probably hot chocolate or mulled wine and the cool part about it is so in Paris it's legal to drink on the streets but it is not legal to be drunk which kind of makes sense. So um, we could carry uh, cups of mulled wine around and it's not as sweet as it is here in the US. That's another thing I really liked is it was because I'm not a big sweet wine drinker, but this was really good. A little bit of sweetness, but not too much. So more Disney, lots of Disney layouts here. So this is our first ride. You can tell by those big smiles how excited we are to be here. So my daughter-in-law and I, and then um, the two of them um, outside Rat Ratatouille. Totally appropriate that this was our first ride because that movie takes place in Paris or in France. So that was really kind of fun to do that first. And I like the little smiles from ear to ear. So just kind of a fun. And this is Echo Park, main, mainly Echo. Well, it's this is Echo Park. The This stuff here, now that I'm looking at it, is all Ellie's studio. Um, this is a, a lot of... Um, 
Echo Park here, but with a little bit of LA Studio mixed in and some Etsy has a lot of Disney embellishments on it. So you can Google a couple of different places. Um, and as I'm going through and actually creating layouts for you guys um, on my regular Tuesday and Saturday, I'll talk about what I'm using here so that you can see that. But this is one of the um, statues uh, from Fantasia outside of Disneyland, I'm sorry, Walt Disney Studios in Disneyland Paris, and then kind of like the iconic Disney Studios water tower that used to be in Florida and is no longer there. So it's kind of cool. Somebody on one of the Disney groups in Florida was just bemoaning that fact, and I sent him a picture of this and said, you need to go to Paris. <laughs> so, so I said, like I said, you guys, lots of Disney, lots of Paris today. Um, we rode Tower of Terror. It was really fun. My best friend had not ever ridden this, so we didn't really tell her what was going to happen, and we just kind of cackled about it. And then when it, you know, when at first when we were, um, you know, dropping and kind of stuff, there is an iconic photo that I, did I scrapbook it yet? I did not, um, of the three of us that I'm going to have to come back and I'm going to have to come back and scrapbook that photo because, oh my gosh, it's hilarious because our mouths are open and it's, it's really fun. So anyway, so Tower of Terror here and lots of doodle bug here with a little bit of Echo Park and some Bella Boulevard actually there as well. So I just, I really, this is one of my favorite rides, even though it's scary as all get out. I'm a definitely a bit of a adrenaline junkie when it comes to roller coasters and that kind of stuff, even at my ripe old age of 60 now. <laughs> so since you saw the birthday photos where I turned 60. All right. So then this is also at Disneyland. This is when we were in, in line for Tower of Terror and there were flowers blooming on the trees and also in the gardens because it's so much more temperate. So even though it was January, and it was cold. It was in the 30s a lot of our time there and a little bit in the 40s, colder than it normally is. It's normally in mid 40s. Um, and then the following week after we left, it was in the 50s. But and you'll eventually see pictures, I think, where I scrapbook Versailles in the snow. Um, but anyway, so I wanted to get that documented because it was so unusual. It's so in bloom. All right. This now back to the kids again. So this is um M4's first overnight with me solo. He stayed at my house a lot, but never without his sisters and brothers. I think, I, I don't know if I have said this to you guys, but we used to joke about how, I used to joke about how his, he was afraid I was trying to kill him. Um, he was just, he's a, he's a, he was nine months old when COVID started and he did not see a lot of people at first. And so his stranger danger has been just kind of a tougher process because he didn't get to go through it normally when most kids do that happened later about a year later um or even six months later was a little tough on him so just some pictures of him with that darling smile of his and us playing games and then we went to kind of a not truly a petting zoo there is part of it that you can do that but um this is a I love this photo when he got eye to eye with the peacock although I told him to stay back a little bit because I was afraid he might try to poke his eye out and then a flip again so that we've got a flip there. Um, another soccer photo. So this is my grandson's team um, for fall, and they went undefeated. So that's just kind of documenting that with some more soccer um, things. And I guess, it, you know, I keep using this because their uniforms are yellow and black. So I have to do that a lot. This is another adventure that they went on with grandpa here, their grandpa here. They wanted to take the city bus in Milwaukee. And so he took them on a city bus adventure one day and they went to this sporting goods store that they all like, which he's just such a great guy. He's, he's a fantastic grandpa. And that is it, you guys. So hopefully that's been a little fun. You got a preview of some Disney and some um, Paris you will start seeing, and like I said, I think it's April 6th that my first, I don't remember if it's Disney or Paris, but I think it's Disney, that my first layout's going to come out and you'll see me create it versus what you saw today. But it felt good to get, you know, at least get started here. And um, and there we go. There's a macaron. <laughs> so, so the good part, if you joined us a little bit late, um, go ahead, you know, you can watch from the beginning. Hopefully it hasn't been, oh yeah, I figured, usually it takes me about an hour to do these. So 
Um, but anyway, so I'm super excited that now I get to start putting these away in my book, which is really fun that it's my book is starting. So anyway, you guys, thanks for joining me. And if you have any questions you can throw about what I'm using, you can pop them into the comments and then I will try to follow up as closely as I can because I was scrapping all of this in one weekend. Um, it's a little bit harder for me, but I have a pretty good memory for product I use. So at least I can get you pointed in the right direction. So, all right, you guys, thanks for joining me tonight. Hopefully you're going to have a great rest of your evening or you're having a great day if you're watching this later on. Take care. Bye everybody.